and welcome to Sunrise Serials. I'm your host, Richard Pochard, and today we have the penultimate episode of Flash Gordon. That's fancy talk for second to last. That's right, only one more episode after today. Now, yesterday, I talked a little bit about some of the ways they saved money on the massive sets needed while shooting this serial. Today, I want to talk about something that most people don't think about when they watch a movie. The music score. Now, most movie buffs will tell you, if you're watching a movie and thinking about the score, then the composer didn't do his job right. A good movie score enhances the movie without distracting from it. Flash Gordon has a very impressive music score. So, who was the composer? There wasn't one. Or perhaps I should say there wasn't just one. Because of their length, it wasn't cost efficient to hire a composer for a serial, so they relied on mostly classical music for their scores. For example, some of the music in Flash Gordon is from Les Paroluts by Franz Liszt. And the other main source for music was a studio's archives and Universal had one of the best. Much of the music for Flash Gordon was lifted from earlier Universal film projects, most notably the music from The Bride of Frankenstein, by another Franz, Franz Waxman. I can still remember seeing Bride of Frankenstein for the first time and thinking, why are they using the music from Flash Gordon? Okay, enough of that. Let's get to chapter 12 of Flash Gordon, Trapped in the Turret. of a struggle here. No, this job is one of craft, not of force. I see the hand of Prince's aura in this. Come on. Gosh, those guards wouldn't want to do anything too silly, like, I don't know, using their swords? Ah! 
Hagrid is acting strangely. We must be near the girl. <laughs> Distracted with a ball of yarn. Tigran has been killed. I must pray to the great god Tail to save us. Flash, you've killed him. Yes, I guess I got here just in time. Sora, why did you do this? I'm not accountable to you for my actions, Prince Baron. You cannot hope to win the regard of Flash Garden by destroying the woman he loves. I won the friendship of the Earth people by helping them. You should do the same. All right. You'll help them. And just like that, she's one of the good guys. Ain't love grand? Stop it, or I'll blow your friend to bits. Dr. Zarkov, His Majesty is prepared to overlook your recent action, on condition. I have no desire to bargain with your Emperor. His terms are that you divulge the secret of the invisibility machine. Your Emperor has very little respect for my intelligence. I didn't think you'd ever get out of that one alive, Flash. Yes. Looks like some of your work, Princess Aura. Her Highness has promised to help us. In what way? I shall intercede with my father, the Emperor. Come, I'll take you to the throne room. What do you think, Gail? Please believe me. All right. Earthman must be found, visible or not. Order the guards double at once. Should the Earthman return to visibility, destroy immediately the machine by which Dr. Sarkov removed him from sight. Yes, Your Majesty. Seize him! Father, you must listen to me. Order your men to withdraw. If it were not for the love I bear your daughter, Princess Aura, I'd kill you. I am delighted to learn that you look with favor upon Prince Baron. I see no reason why we should not live in peace until such time as the Earth people return to their own sphere. His Majesty demands the immediate destruction of the invisibility machine. No, no. You must not. It's invaluable. Ah! No more trickery, Ming.
Go claim the Earth people free at once. Why should I not be glad to speed your return to Earth? Should I regret the departure of one who has thrown my entire kingdom into turmoil? Hmm. And now that you have chosen your brides, we can proceed with the festival we had planned. What about Dr. Zarkov and King Valton, whom we left in the laboratory? You can take them the news of their freedom. Officer Rigo. Your Majesty. Conduct them to my laboratory. Emperor Ming has ordered the release of these prisoners. I do not believe you. This officer here will confirm what I say. The Earth Man speaks the truth. Now, if you gentlemen just step outside, we will have more room in here. You'll be more comfortable out there. It's like we can't get away. Why, Zarkov, what happened? destroyed my invisibility machine. We won't need it again, will we? I'm not so sure about that. But Emperor Ming promised us safety. Yes, Ming is a very easy promiser. I don't trust him. You are right. Ming is not to be trusted. You must leave here as soon as possible. It is time for communication with the Earth. They can barely get through to Earth. Now they're on a schedule? That was swell, Doc. You have been talking to the Earth from which you came? You are a remarkable man, Dr. Zarkov, and I regret your decision to leave us. Before we go, I'd like to make sure that Ming doesn't endanger the Earth again. We haven't gone yet. Instead of returning to the Earth immediately, why not come to my kingdom first? It's not a bad idea. How about it, Doc? There is some very special work that must be done immediately. Yes, you. Select your cleverest men. Each member of the Earth Party must be watched constantly. Every move, every word must be observed. I agree with you. Your laboratory is even better for my work than this one. Communicate with Fun. We may need him. Baron! <laughs> Are you not happy with your newfound freedom? We'll be happier when we're sure. I'm sure that Emperor Ming is sincere in his wish to be rid of him. You're right there. But it's how he wants to get rid of it that concerns me. It is best that we go to my kingdom. Oh, that would offend men. Why should it? You admit that his main thought is to get rid of us. This order also applies to Prince Baron and Princess Aura. You will act immediately. What do you think of the plan? 
Your Highness? I think they'd be much safer with King Valton. It shall be as you wish. I'll prepare my rocket ship for you. Our departure must be made secretly. I'll meet you with the ship outside the palace walls. I know just the place. The guardhouse at the Lake of Rocks. All right. Somehow, the Lake of Rocks doesn't sound like an appealing oh. vacation spot. I'm to meet the others at the turret house by the Lake of Rocks. Walton's palace. We're leaving here at once. We will do as you ask. We'll be seeing it then, old boy. We must hurry. Prince Baron is waiting for us. Hey! You forgot to turn sun off! Come on, we'd better hurry up. Must be Baron ship. Wait, Baron flew a rocket to the turret. They walked and got there first? Why should Prince Baron do that? When they went inside, 
It was a cave. Isn't a turret part of a castle? Ugh, I'm so confused. Thank goodness we have the final episode tomorrow. Meanwhile, feel free to comment on today's show, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Could this be Prince Baron's way of trying to get out of his relationship with Princess Aura? Will Ming cancel the caterers for the festival? Are Flash and the gang getting their first taste of hard rock? Be here tomorrow for the grand finale of Flash Gordon, Chapter 13, the This Is Obviously the Last Episode, titled Rocketing to Earth. See you then.